Hey there, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling and today we're going to talk about the peritoneum. So uh, while talking about the peritoneum, we have, uh, we'll be talking about the peritoneum in, in several steps. First we'll be giving an introduction to the peritoneum, then we'll talk about the structure, the two layers and then we'll be talking about the peritoneal cavity, the organs that are intra and retro peritoneal organs and in the final phase we'll be talking about the peritoneal reflections that is your mesentery, omentum and your peritoneal ligaments. So with further let's get started. So your peritoneum is actually the uh, continuous membrane which lines your abdominal cavity and covers the abdominal organs which are your abdominal viscera. So it acts to support the viscera and provides pathways for blood vessels and lymph to travel to and from the viscera. So while talking about the structure of the peritoneum, we have to remember that the peritoneum consists of two layers and which uh, that that are continuous with each other the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum both types this parietal and visceral peritoneum both types are made up of simple squamous epithelial cells you have to remember they are made up of simple squamous epithelial cells and we call them mesothelium First, let's talk about the parietal peritoneum. The parietal peritoneum is actually lines the internal surface of your abdominal pelvic wall. This is the outer lining or the outer layer of the peritoneum which covers your abdominal pelvic wall. It is actually derived from your somatic mesoderm. Remember this one. Your parietal peritoneum is derived from your somatic meso mesoderm in the embryo and it receives the same somatic nerve supply as the region of the abdominal wall that it lines. Therefore, the pain from parietal peritoneum is well localized. And one thing you also have to remember that the parietal peritoneum is sensitive. It is sensitive to the pressure which is P and pain, it is also sensitive to pain and laceration and finally the temperature. So it is sensitive to this structure. And with this stand, when we talk about the visceral peritoneum, it differs a little bit because it covers the internal organs or the viscera. You can see in the blue structure, if I mark this with a blue marker, so you can see this is your, this one, this covers up the blue line, this is your kind of uh, what we call the visceral peritoneum. So this visceral peritoneum is a kind of covering this structure. Let me name this is this structure first then because it would be easy to name it. So this is your lungs. This is your lung. This is your stomach. So let me use the red. Uh, or let me use the red. So this is your stomach and this is what we call the uh, me, uh, transverse mesocolon right so these are the main structure basic structure you have to remember so visual uh, uh, visual peritoneum covers up uh, the internal organ so the visual peritoneum invaginates to cover the majority of the abdominal viscera and it is derived from your splanchnic mesoderm all right so it is derived from the splanchnic mesoderm that one was driving from the somatic and the visual peritoneum is driving from the uh, splanchnic mesoderm in the embryo. The visceral peritoneum has the same autonomic nerve supply as the viscera it covers. Unlike the parietal, uh, parietal, parietal peritoneum, uh, the pain from the visceral peritoneum is poorly localized and the visceral peritoneum is only sensitive. You have to remember it is only sensitive to your stretch and the chemical irritation. So it is only sensitive to these two things that is your stretch and your chemical irritation. So pain, so that's about the uh, what we call the introduction regarding the structure and what is the parietal peritoneum and what is the visceral peritoneum. Very simple. Now let's talk about the peritoneal cavity. So peritoneal cavity is this cavity you can see which is highlighted in yellow color this one. This big empty space is called peritoneal cavity which is between your parietal and visceral peritoneum. So you can define it in this manner. The, per uh, the peritoneal cavity is a potential space that is between the parietal and visceral peritoneum it normally contains only a small amount of lubricating fluid 
and this is very much uh, because remember it's also a potential space not a real space and uh, let's talk about the intra and retro peritoneal structures or organs for that i'll be using this diagram it will be explaining it very much detail it will be easy to remember so remember that the intraperitoneal organs are enveloped by visceral peritoneum which covers the organ both anteriorly and posteriorly w what does that mean that means the completely the uh, organs which are completely covered by peritoneum are called your what we call them uh, we call them intraperitoneal. If you see this diagram, we can see that these the stomach is intraperitoneal because it's covered by peritoneum on the other on the side. Remember when we're talking about the intraperitoneal, only visceral layer covers the whole structure. So this is your intraperitoneal stomach, your liver is intraperitoneal, your transverse mesocolon, even your sigmoid mesocolon is your intraperitoneal. So we will be talking about in just a bit. So see this diagram. We have a stomach, we have seen the picture, a stomach is intraperitoneal. The first part of duodenum is also intraperitoneal because some peritoneum is there from coming from the stomach, from the duodenum from the stomach to the first part of the duodenum your second third part of the duodenum are not intraperitoneal they are retroperitoneal we're just coming to that one in just a bit so jejunum and ileum again your cecum appendix as you go ahead and your transverse colon that is the above structure for example uh, this is uh, this is it so your transverse colon which is on this side if i highlight it with the uh, blue so remember the transverse colon this one and your sigmoid colon both are intraperitoneal organs so this is sigmoid colon and transverse colon are intraperitoneal your liver obviously your liver and and, and uh, beneath the liver we have the gallbladder so they're both they are what we call the intraperitoneal and the tail of pancreas is and its spleen is intraperitoneal so what is the story of tail of pancreas look let me explain this way Consider this is as uh, spleen, this is spleen, and we have got the pancreas in it. So this is your pancreas, this is tail of pancreas, and this is your pancreas. So consider this part as your tail of pancreas. So this is the, consider it as a tail of pancreas. So remember we know that uh, the... Uh, Spleen is completely covered by peritoneum, but when it comes near to the uh, hilum side, so some part of pancreas enters into the hilum side of the uh, pen, pen, uh, the tail of pancreas enters into the uh, into the hilum of the spleen. So that's why it is getting the cover of the, the cover of the peritoneum of the spleen. So that's we that's why we call that the tail of the pancreas is actually an intra peritoneal structure. Now let's talk about the retro peritoneal structures. So, retroperitoneal organs are not associated with visceral peritoneum. They are only covered in parietal peritoneum. And that peritoneum only covers their anterior surface. And they can be further divided into two groups based on embryologically, remember. The first group we call them the primary retroperitoneal. So, if I define this in this manner, that remember your retroperitoneal can be divided into two, one, two lines so we have got the primary retroperitoneal and your secondary retroperitoneal so the story behind the primary retroperitoneal is that uh, primary retroperitoneal organs developed and remain outside of the peri parietal peritoneum which are what structures are found here your esophagus your rectum and kidneys are primarily retroperitoneal remember this one they are embryologically behind your what we call the parietal peritoneum they are not intraperitoneal so that's why we're calling them primary retroperitoneal and the story is different for the secondary uh, secondary retroperitoneal organs because secondary retroperitoneal organs were initially intraperitoneal suspended by mesentery through the course of embryogenesis, they became retroperitoneal as their mesentery fused with the posterior abdominal wall. If you see this structure, as their mesentery is fused with posterior abdominal wall, that's covered with peritoneum. Examples, example of, uh, of uh, the secondary retroperitoneal organs include your ascending and descending colon, your ascending and your dis descending and your descending colon and uh, these two structures are actually secondary retroperitoneal uh, retro because initially they were intraperitoneal in the embryo uh, embryonic life and after they, it changed. And let's talk about the uh, 
uh, retroperitoneal organs so while remembering retroperitoneal organs we will just uh, use a trick to remember them i have got a trick uh, for farbula i just found it on the internet so i'll i'll just write it down here so to remember the organs of retroperitoneal or structures of retro uh, structure that are retroperitoneal you just have to remember a mnemonic called sad s a d sad and pucker so i don't know what does that mean so this is sad P U C K E R. So this is your sad pucker, right? So what does that mean? Your sad means supra renal glands. A means your aorta, and again you can consider vena cava because both are vessels. D means duodenum. P means your pancreas except the tail because uh, the tail is intraperitoneal. Your ureters, your colon. Uh, U means colon and which C means colon, which colon? Ascending and descending colon. K means kidney, E for esophagus and R for rectum. Very easy formula to remember if you want to remember the retroperitoneal organs or structures. If you remember this formula, you're good to go. And in the case of this duodenum, you have to remember that except the proximal 2 cm of duodenum, and or you can say the duodenal cap is uh, is the intraperitoneal now let's talk about the peritoneal reflections so when we're talking about the peritoneal reflections we know we have uh, uh, the, what is peritoneal reflection let me first define it so the re uh, peritoneal reflection is actually the peritoneum covers uh, remember that the peritoneum covers nearly all viscerals within the gut and conveys neurovascular structure from the body wall to intraperitoneal viscera. So, in order to adequately fulfill its function, the peritoneum develops into highly folded complex structure and a number of terms are used to describe the folds and spaces that are part of peritoneum. So, we uh, these folded structure which fold later on, we call them with different names and collectively they are called the, uh, what we call them, peritoneal reflection so first we'll be talking about the mesentery so what is mesentery so you can see the mesentery in this diagram so mesentery let me use change the marker and you can see this is mesentery all right so mesentery all right a mesentery is actually a double layer of visceral peritoneum it connects an intraperitoneal organ to the posterior abdominal wall remember this one connects the and connects the an intraperitoneal organs to the, usually to the posterior abdominal wall it provides a pathway for nerves blood vessels and lymphatics to travel from the body to the viscera so the mesentery of the small intestine is simply the mesentery this is the small intestine it has a mesentery which attaches posteriorly and sigmoid colon has its own mesentery we call, we call it the sigmoid mesentery appendix has its own mesentery we call this one as meso appendix right meso appendix and transverse colon has its own mesentery we call that transfers meso colon and again the case of sigmoid colon we call it the transverse meso colon it's a, mesentery is just nothing it's just a double layer uh, folding of your peritoneum which kind of attaches these structure intraperitoneal organs to the posterior abdominal wall very simple very uh, very uh, very idyllic idyllic idea now let's talk about the omentum so uh, to explain the omentum i'll use this diagram which is really easy to remember so we have this omentum um, again the omenta are sheets of visceral peritoneum remember they are sheets of visceral perit peritoneum not the parietal that extend from your stomach and proximal part of the duodenum to other abdominal structure so we have two type of what we call the omentum we have the lesser omentum and the greater omentum so omentum are nothing simply they are just peritoneal folds and we have two types of peritoneal folds we call the omentum we have lesser omentum what does that lesser omentum means it means it is attached from lesser curvature of stomach this is your lesser curvature of stomach and from here it goes upward and attaches to the near the porta hepatis beneath the liver so this is your lesser omentum and your lesser momentum again and um, if you talk about the greater momentum greater momentum greater is used from the because it's attached to the greater curvature of your stomach and some part of your first part of your duodenum so we call it greater momentum and this greater momentum is 
really amazing. Let me let me go further on. So you were, you know, what happened in the case of greater momentum? What happens? This shield, this uh, this greater momentum is. I remember this one. The greater momentum consists actually of four layers of visceral peritoneum. It kind of descends from the greater curvature of the stomach and proximal to the uh, duodenum, then folds back and attaches to the anterior surface of transverse means transverse colon let me explain this one by using another diagram if i can if i kind of find it right here so this is it this is the diagram so this one this is structure you see this biggest structure is called your greater momentum this is a kind of cross section so this is a greater momentum coming from your stomach downward hanging downward and going folding back and attaching to the anterior surface of your transverse colon so that's why we call it a double fold layer because two layers are found here two layers are found here so that's why there's a fold layer structure and this is it regarding your greater momentum and lesser momentum and this kind of protect this is a greater momentum is also called the policeman of your abdomen this is also called policeman of your abdomen if somebody asks you just just reply them with a good answer now we'll talk about the last uh, structure or the last peritoneal reflection which is called the peritoneal ligaments so uh, we'll start by talking about uh, these structures first so we'll talk about the stomach first uh, again these ligaments are formed by the peritoneum so that's why we call them peritoneal ligaments first we have the hepatogastric ligament hepato means liver gastric means your stomach so that's why hepatogastric ligament gastrophrenic ligament again attaches your uh, uh, sorry again attaches your stomach to the phrenic means your diaph diaphragm so lower part of diaphragm attaches to the stomach so that's why we call it gastrophrenic uh, this one ligament you can see it right down there gastrophrenic ligament again the uh, last which is the gastro splenic again gastro means your stomach splenic means spleen so that's the gastro splenic ligament sometimes it's also called gastro linear ligament and the last one is gastro colic ligament which means it attaches with the transverse colon and again to the uh, lower part of the stomach so this is your gastrocolic ligament again coming to the spleen again we have a similar which is a gastrosplenic ligament which is similar to this one both are same gastrosplenic ligament and we have the spleno renal ligament which means it atta attaches your spleen and renal renal means kidney again both are attached together by a ligament a peritoneal fold which is called spleno renal ligament now coming to the liver we have basic structures in the liver so let me go back so all right so in liver you have to remember first falciform ligament so this is your falciform ligament kind of coming up there this is also a peritoneal folding this is a falciform ligament and from falciform ligament two corneal ligaments arise and from there left and right triangular ligaments arise and again another structure we have the round ligament sometimes also called ligamentum teres hepatis uh, and uh, this is also the ligamentum of liver again another structure is hepatogastric ligament hepato this is same here this one and uh, again nothing much in detail and hepatodeutinal ligament again attaches the liver with the first part of the duodenum and the edge or you can say thick edge of lesser uh, momentum and this is it regarding uh, these peritoneal ligaments and uh, I think you find this lecture easy and uh, considerably understandable. If you find any difficulty understanding the peritoneum, please make sure to leave us a comment and uh, we'll be back uh, with another video and try to make these lectures as easy as possible. See you next time. Keep visiting Tig's schooling.